I'm not gonna say it's a guarantee, but it's, it's about as close as a guarantee as you can get. There he is. Got him. Y'all, it's about uh, 6.45 in the morning right now. I'm starting to hear some, some boats take off. I woke up multiple times last night checking on the boat. It got super windy. I actually had to get out in my underwear. Silver Bullet, you're still here, my old girl. Man, I had to literally put down as much, uh, as many appendages as I could. I put down the trolling motor. I had both poles in the back. I put the motor down. This thing was rocking last night, and it was over there. And I heard, I literally heard uh, my power pole like scrape a rock, and I was like, what was that? I was asleep and I got up, I turned my flashlight on, I looked outside and the boat was floating away. So thank goodness I had my ears on. I was, I was ready for outdoor greatness. Let's talk about sleep. I can't really say that that is the best night's sleep that I've ever had. Not having an actual sleeping pad is a doozy. Mm. But I know what's gonna make me feel better is a nice hot cup of coffee. I got a huge canister. Brought enough coffee to last two weeks. So, <laughs> tells you where my head's at. Priorities. Something I'm probably gonna have to get used to in New Zealand is taking down a wet tent every morning. So, might as well get used to it. So another thing that happened last night was the water dropped. And now my boat is kind of stuck here. So I'm gonna have to try to lift it up. to be stuck y'all. Lessons of life <laughs> when you're camping on an island on a lake that just flooded. Uh, these are the things that happen. They're letting out water. That's the thing about sleeping on the lake though. You definitely get in tune with what's going on. First fish of the day. Oh, it came on a fluke. A little weighted bait, very back of this creek here. Coffee's still steaming back there. God, that is a beautiful sight right there. Just go ahead and hit that like button. Just give it a good hard smash for sunrise, coffee, and bass right there. Look at that bloody tail too. Indicators indicators right up next to one of these trees in here i figured i could come back here and catch a couple with this little creek being so close to the boat ramp i figured it'd be worth a shot oh that's over a limb there one's got it not even kidding got it while it was hanging on a limb <clears throat> <laughs> the old dangle. Oh, he got away. The old actual dangle. Oh, man. Okay. That was crazy, y'all. Like, I could just see my line moving. 
I thought it was like, it was a pretty good chance that there would be one around there though. These little trees. I could probably take that flashlight off now. You ever make yourself a cup of joe? Get ready to get a good sniff and a sip and then you realize you don't have a coffee cup? That's what I'm currently dealing with. Good thing is though, I have one in my truck. Look at the steamy goodness. So after fishing that fluke for a minute, it got me thinking, because yesterday, I was seeing multiple fish in areas, like one would grab it and then another one would be behind it. And if I just had two danglers on there, it would, I would get both of those fish. So I'm gonna try that rig out today and see how it does. Well, as I'm sitting here at the ramp, looking to my right, there is a, there's like five or six fish just filleted sitting in the water. At first I thought they were striper, then I started looking closer. I was like, it kind of looks like a drum. And then I realized it's a daggum bass. There's maybe one that's about three pounds in there. Most of them are about two pounds. I guess that's the average size out here. Just looking at a bunch of dead filleted bass here at the boat ramp. They are pretty tasty, but I try not to eat them. I, I go after crappie, they're much better. Got our coffee fuel and we're ready to go. Sunrise bass fishing, baby. God, I love the outdoors, y'all. Absolutely love outdoor greatness. One eating it, bluegill. A lot of bluegill in this pocket. Skinny, skinny, skinny. Okay, sir, let you go. Oh, God, it came off. It's flattening out into this perfect spawning area. Depth in this creek is fantastic. Y'all, I hate doing that. I hate picking up this little little rig here. Something I can't do is really set the hook. There's a bite. I can't reel into him like that. Oh, it came off. Dang it. The worm hooked itself. Golly, I don't know how big that fish was. Big enough to for me to remember. The fish size seems to be better in this creek better than the other fish I was catching earlier. There's a bite, got it. That feels like a better one. Nope, little guy. Oh, and of course, I get, the, I get the little tweaker here. What are you? Are you some sort of hybrid bass? What's going on here? This is a hybrid bass, I believe. You see that? No striation through here. It's a spotted bass. You could feel the tongue, but it's got like no, no lateral line. It's very strange. It's a cool catch. Oh, just saw a bass uh, go to town right there um, on the eats. Because this water is so clear, and this is a flat, what I'm trying to do is, there's one. Little guy. What I'm trying to do here is just make long casts on this flat so the fish don't see me. Small one. Little trees. It's amazing. These things weren't even underwater a few days ago. Now they're just utilizing them as cover pretty adamantly. I mean, it's been like every creek that I've been into, it's, it's a thing. Coming at me. Ooh, what do we got? 
He's running. Mm -hmm. Got the drag loose. Oh, you're just a little guy. But I knew you were going to be back there. God, these fish are just strong, mighty and strong. Got you right in the top of the lip, buddy. Right in the top of the schnoot. Oh, that's weird. I didn't even get them on the inside of the mouth. Skin hooked right on the outside. Nice little two pound large mouth. Boy, this lake is loaded with two pounders. Will there be one back here? I think so. I'm not gonna say it's a guarantee, but it's, it's about as close as a guarantee as you can get. There he is. Got him. And it's a decent one. Woohoo! Look at him jump. Woo, baby. Gosh dang, I love me some largemouth. I love when you guys get predictable too. Beautiful. Beautiful. Another two and a half pounder. Oh man, you choked it. You choked it. Ah, there we go. Look at that. Glistening fins in the sunlight. Golly. Better smash that like button, y'all. Another fish in a pocket. Uh, I don't know if y'all can see that white area right there below my line. So when a fish bites your lure, and it's especially soft plastics, especially weightless soft plastics, when they suck it all the way in, their teeth get on this area right here. And when you're using a, a, a hook like this, just a, a plain, simple hook, no, it doesn't need to come through the plastics. It's exposed. I don't need to set the hook really that hard. If I do, I'm gonna break my line when I'm using light pound tests like this. It's really less than 10. I try not to yank on them too hard. Reel into them and you'll usually get them and they'll get a better hook set too. And just make sure you're retying often when you're using light line. There he is now. Little guy. Right at the end of that log though. Man, listen to that tail flap in the air. Full body exit from the water. Gotta love it. Oh man, I almost couldn't lift you dude. Nice, healthy, fat one. Just like clones, just two pound galore. Let's see, buddy. So we're approaching the back of a creek here. And it uh, it's probably gonna have a few more. That's just been the pattern. Especially like these little pockets, these little cuts like that something that they can just kind of tuck in and do a little spawn action they absolutely love it there's another one right there in that little cut a little smaller another one with it another dad gum oh gosh this is when i need my double my double fluky <sighs> okay well, there's a spotted bass there was a bigger one with it. I'm assuming they were spawning. I, I don't really know much about spotted bass spawning, to be honest with you. They're kind of mysterious. 
but uh, that's a fat, chunky, healthy one. There was another one with it that was a little bigger. And then there was another one that came in that was like tiny. It was like, hey, uh, can I eat that? So the other day I got in my MTB Pro box some goodies, but one of the things that really stood out to me, donkey rig. It's one of those things where I was thinking, I haven't tried this technique too much. And uh, all those fish that were coming up with multiples yesterday, I would have got them on this. So two hooks, two swivels, and I'll show you how to rig this puppy up. Okay, so first thing you wanna do is rig you up a leader with one of these barrel swivels and one of the hooks it comes with. So I'm using 15 pound uh, Guggen fluoro right here. Okay, barrel swivel at one end, put your hook on the other end. Okay, we got about 18 inches for our leader. Okay, I'm gonna cut myself another leader. One's about 12, is gonna be 12 inches, the other one's about 18. We're gonna slide this one up the line. We're gonna take the longer one. We're gonna tie it here to the end of the main line, coming from the rod and reel. Rig up my other bait here, and this thing is gonna be sick in the water. One is a little bit longer than the other, so it looks like they're chasing each other, and it is nasty. That cast ought to have one. Point comes out there a little bit longer. Got it right under the boat. Probably gonna be a spotted bass. Or is that a largie? It's a largie suspended out here. He ate the clear one. It's good to know. Thank you for the knowledge, sir. Oh, hey there, bud. Hey. Oh, you threw my lure, you daggum punk. You punk. That is a spawner. That's a mid spawner there. That's going to need a retie. You see, y'all, when a fish has got it, like right down in there. That's why you just want to do that real easy hook set. So definitely need a retie after that. Let that fish go. Woo! Woo! Man, it's crazy. Is like in the very back of the pocket, I can see fish just swarming around. It's like they're getting ready to spawn. They're moving up, and they're they're not really interested in eating too much. They're it's like at this time of day. They're looking for their beds, making their beds, getting ready. Another two pounder. Just another two pounder. Had some good luck butterflies just landing on the boat here. Blessing the boat for us. going sir come on back come on back got my lucky butterfly over here look at him he's coming in coming in hot flying all around us you just gotta enjoy nature this is uh this is a paradise y'all look at this amazing bass paradise Oh, this lake really reminds me of one of my favorite places to fish in the world. It's Table Rock Lake. That's going to need a retie right there. Mm hmm. Hey, another two pounder. I've definitely got some goodness happening here for, for bites. You know, getting those two to two and a half pounders. Possibly had some bigger fish broken off, but certified, bona fide, stick a fork in a pattern going in the backs of these pockets and creeks uh, and i'm at a different part of the lake than i was uh, yesterday so if you guys are wondering what that looks like from a map point of view uh, this is basically it and you just look at you're looking for pockets you're looking for uh, big creeks and pockets within those creeks and anywhere that has some water depth 
in the backs of those pockets. So the ones that are super shallow and really flat, you can just kind of look at the topographical situation going on and you can figure out which ones are deeper and shallower. Uh, and you can run that pattern pretty much everywhere. But this lake is ginormous and I haven't explored much of it. So I kind of want to go exploring and see if there's anything else that I'm missing out on. It's hard to leave fish that are biting. I'm really breaking a rule here. Don't leave a pattern that's good and don't leave fish that are biting. But just for the sake of it's a new lake, haven't explored it very much, I want to make sure I'm not missing out on anything because this lake has got smallmouth and a bunch of other species that I'd love to get on the line. Just a daggum dangle fest out here. I love it. Let's go, Silver Bullet. Get us to the next hole. Little guy, come here now. A little heavier than I thought. Oh. Well, he's a two pounder. <laughs> oh, these just crazy little two pounders. Gotta do it, y'all. You sweet, delicious one. Gosh, they're small, but they're beautiful and I love them. Oh man, I'm gonna let you go in the waters by my boat. the biggest one of the day while I'm getting a tan. Hopefully you're not blinded. Wow, there goes one. There's a bunch more swimming by. The amount of beds that are in the back of this cove are ridiculous. Oh, you son of a... See you, baby. I came back in uh, the back of this creek and it splits in the back and it is just chocked full of beds. The most beds I've seen this entire time I've been fishing. It may have something to do with being like midday too and they're really piling in here, get starting to get, get their beds made. But it is just, when you see that, it's just fan cast around. Well y'all, it is just uh, pretty safe to say these fish are Getting on bed this afternoon. That was just one of those one casters. Just wabammed it. No oh man, this is the, like the most spotted one I've seen. Oh, get up in here. Oh yeah. Eight pound test. Look at that beautiful little speckles there. Uh, there's a lot of rock down here. It's good hard bottom. There's bluegill. Like this is the most spawning activity I've seen. Uh, but it also means that the action's kind of slowing down because they're starting to bed, at least in this region of the lake that I'm in. So I think I might actually get out of here because I'm not seeing any big fish on beds. So I was running down the lake and I looked down at my gas gauge and it said zero. Like I have a digital meter that says it's, it was like 0.1 over here. And then on my analog gauge, it's showing empty as well. I had a quarter tank just a little bit ago, so it doesn't really make sense, but I'm super scared to run up to another spot that I wanted to, uh, because if I do run out of gas, I'm screwed. Like this lake is big, it's windy. It's not a good situation, so. I'm probably gonna have to shut it down here, guys. Well, we made it, y'all. Did run out of gas. Thank the lucky stars. Well, was it a good day on the water, y'all? Absolutely it was. Even though I didn't get any big fish, just catching a lot of decent fish, uh, I'm really impressed by this lake. I really wanted to catch you a double on the donkey rig. Look how fun that is. That's like a, what do you call those things? A, a children's mogul or something like that. 
That thing in the water is crazy. And I, I was hoping for a double hookup, but I will return. One day I will get a double hookup on this donkey rig. And I will leave this uh, link down below if you guys are curious, want to check it out on your home waters. It's pretty fun to play around with. You know, if you like throwing weightless baits, if you got clear water, there's just bass that are schooling up together. You see them uh, uh, more than one at a time, break this thing out. So uh, I'll leave it in link down below. It's, uh, it's available at Carl's. Didn't get a smallmouth, didn't get a walleye, didn't get a crappie, but I will be back, y'all. Let me know in the comments down below if you like that format. Just going out, doing a little camping, a little fishing, exploring new places. I love doing both of those things. And that is where I'm going to leave you today, y'all. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, go ahead and do so. And I hope wherever you are, you're getting to experience some outdoor greatness. If not, just soak it in right here, and I'll see you right here on the next one. Later.